from missiles you can carry on your shoulders to attack drones. These are some of Ukraine's smaller weapons, and they've been effective at fighting Russia's bigger and more powerful arms. Military strategists say these lighter tools can help an underdog army become more like a porcupine. The porcupine strategy is really when a smaller military tries to defend itself from a larger military, which is the attacker, and it uses lots of smaller weapons. This strategy has inspired Taiwan and even its president to rethink how to defend itself against a much larger adversary, China. Beijing sees Taiwan as part of its territory. And as the possibility of an armed conflict around the island has escalated, Taipei is taking clues from Ukraine to prepare to fight China's powerful army. For several decades, Taiwan has favored expensive gear like fighter jets, helicopters and tanks to prepare for a possible war with China. And this threat has become heightened as tensions have soared to the highest point over Taiwan in more than two decades. After U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taipei, Beijing began days of military exercises that encircled the island, launching rocket and ballistic missiles and sending Navy ships and warplanes nearby. Defense analysts say if there were an actual invasion, Taiwan alone wouldn't be able to ward off China because its big-ticket weapons would be quickly destroyed by a more powerful arsenal. And Taiwan has far fewer soldiers compared with its neighbor, which has the world's largest military by active personnel. Given the disadvantages, that's where the so-called porcupine capabilities come in. Much like the animal, it tries to inflict so much pain on the large arrival that it stops the attacker. And one way to inflict a lot of pain, these handheld anti-tank and anti-aircraft equipment used by individual soldiers. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, the U.S. has sent thousands of Stinger and Javelin missiles to the battlefield. And these weapons are particularly useful for smaller militaries because they're able to have an outsized impact on their rival. The Russians have been using lots of large invasion forces using tanks and planes, and the Ukrainians have been able to fight back by using these smaller weapons and using them very effectively to destroy large targets. So far, hundreds of Russian tanks and aircraft have been destroyed since the war broke out in February, according to an open-source website that tracks military equipment losses. And that success has driven some Taiwanese leaders, including the president, to embrace these types of anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons. Earlier this year, Taiwan's legislature also approved a motion to conduct more training, possibly involving portable missiles like the Javelin and Stinger. But those handheld missiles have limitations because they only have an operating range of about two and a half miles. That's why Taiwan, like Ukraine, is also getting longer range weapons like these mobile rocket launchers called HIMARS. In Ukraine, they've allowed the army to reach beyond Russia's front line, sending missiles up to 53 miles away. In 2020, the U.S. approved the first sale of the weapon to Taiwan, and the island's defense ministry said it's looking to buy more of them. Another relatively small weapon that can impose heavy losses from very far away, the attack drone. So attack drones can be very useful for smaller militaries because it enables them to do significant damage behind enemy lines. The Ukrainians have been destroying Russian tanks, convoys that have been coming into the country. The attack drones have also been effective at hitting Russia's navy. In May, Ukraine released footage of what it said were drones hitting two Russian vessels in the Black Sea. Russia didn't comment on the Ukrainian claim. This type of sea-based assault could happen in Taiwan since military experts say a Chinese invasion would involve a lot of ships coming over the Taiwan Strait. So the island has been developing its own indigenous drones like this one. The U.S. has also agreed to sell some drones, and Taiwanese lawmakers have been pushing to purchase four of them. Taiwan's government isn't just preparing weapons. Its citizens are also taking action. So some people are picking up shooting lessons just like the Ukrainians. And rallying this type of public support is also an important part of the porcupine strategy. In Ukraine, things didn't go as quickly as the Russians thought they would. One of the reasons for that is the motivation and the willingness of the Ukrainian population to take up arms and to defend their country. So to prepare its citizens for a war, Taiwan's defense ministry is debating plans to extend military conscription for up to a year. 
and a survey found that more than 70% of adults are in favor of a longer service time. While Taiwan can learn a lot from Ukraine's experience, there are unique challenges. Ukraine borders other countries and that makes it possible for its troops to continue receiving a steady flow of weapons and supplies. But if Taiwan is an island and there may be difficulties if there is a Chinese invasion for Taiwan to receive weapons from other countries, particularly if the Chinese form a blockade around the island. So it needs to have large stockpiles ready for a conflict. So building that stock has become a priority. This year, the government pledged an extra $8.7 billion for military equipment. The U.S., which has promised to help Taiwan defend itself, has been selling military gear to Taipei for decades. And after Pelosi's visit there, she said America wouldn't abandon its commitment to the island. We work together for the security of Taiwan. China's National Defense Ministry didn't respond to a request for comment about Taiwan's military buildup. But Taiwan isn't the only one keeping a close eye on the war in Ukraine. Military experts say China is taking notes too. And one of those would be that if you are going to try and take over one of your neighbors, you need to use overwhelming force. And that's been showcased during its live fire drills, showing its ability to effectively blockade Taiwan. If Taiwan is faced with one of the world's most powerful conventional militaries coming at you with everything, that's a very difficult challenge.